Ladies and gentlemen, I feel as if I have been dick -a doomed the ladies and gentlemen, and I kind of tell you why. Because this is the most beautiful boat on the block. I see this boat last week, and I do a little cheesy video about this boat. But this boat is the 36-foot Blackwater boat, and it has this beautiful emblem, which is some man from the pilot house named Jerry just told me is not airbrushed, but in fact she is a, a, a decal, and but it's a three-dimensional decal with the flying fish that I would imagine is the bait fish for the blue marlin. Now this emblem is starting in the front of the boat, which is known as the bow, and this anchor that you see, by anchor lift, is the prow of the boat. That's spelled P-R-O-W. Now, from the prow of the boat back, you can see these beautiful lines, and I have the same lines on my formula SR311, which is 31 foot 11 inches. And I have twin 454s, which is 760 horsepower, naturally aspirated 454s. However, this boat has a different motor package that is known as a Mercury Triple. And this triple is three 300 horse Mercuries. And before I show you the motor package, I'm going to back up across the street and show you what this boat looks like in its entirety. So when I back up here, I'm going to show you what this beautiful boat looks like. With the motor package. And this is what the beautiful boat looks like. That's a 36 foot boat with three Mercury 300 horse motors. Now I'm going to show you the motor package, and they call it a package because they're, they're, they're cordoned off together in a separate type of a package unit. And these motors are Mercury Verados, which is a relatively new addition of the Mercury motor line. And it has, this boat also has what is known as planers. And these are hydraulic planers that operate from actuated hydraulic pistons. And these are the three motors known as the motor package. And these are 300 horsepower motors from the factory, which is a standard package for this size vessel. Now, some people have boats this size with four Mercury Verados or four Yamahas. It depends on what you're doing with the boat. Now, this boat also has what is known as a T-top and underneath that T-top which opens from the front of the boat is a bathroom and the radio and electronics room and it also has a shower and a small sink and that's all incorporated under the T-top and behind the instrumentation necessary for the running of the vessel itself and I hope that you can see that because I can't see it from the angle that I am at. So I'll pan left and I'll pan right and hopefully you'll be able to see that instrumentation package. And then we're going to go look from the front and look directly at the prow of the vessel itself after we get another beautiful shot of this blue marlin. Oh my God. This boat was just sold this week. That's why it's in the uh, yard itself. I guess they're pressing it up a little bit for the new owner. And this is the lines of the boat. And pretty much this boat is about, uh, I would say the beam on this boat's about seven foot six. It's just a little smaller than my formula, but it's a, bit, a little bit longer. And then you have, in the front of the boat, you have your deck area, which is managed by when you want to, we'll go down the canal and say, hey, look at my boat. 
That's what you do when you go down the canal. You sit in the front of that boat and say, hey, look at the, my boat. And if my book, Angels on the Ark, would have been as successful as it should have been, I would have one of these boats on the back of my big yacht, which would have been about 150 feet, with the small helicopter in the front. That was the plan, because of what I have created for YouTube and for this world is something that goes far beyond anybody else's discovery with the pictures and pictographs on the one dollar bill and I should have be worth a hundred million dollars for my discovery and that really pisses me off sometimes that if people find a one little picture on the back of some stupid thing that's 400 years old and they become a world renowned and I have made a three thousand discoveries on the one dollar bill and the codices that are related to the one dollar bill in the Bible and they do not acknowledge my discoveries because if they acknowledge my discoveries that means they have to give me ten million dollars for the rights to the movie to Angels Under the Ark which is my discovery in my book that I have proven beyond any doubt that the Ark of the Covenant is on the one dollar bill and also have proven that the skull and the bones is on the one dollar bill and I also have proven that the Bohemian Grove Owl is on the one dollar bill and I would have one of these boats as my lifeboat on the back of my yacht but what do they do instead ladies and gentlemen they give me the dick of doom that's right they give a Michael Fazio the dick of doom like a Mr. Obama who gives everybody the dick of doom because Mr. Obama's are not releasing the amount of information from the Fukushima radiation which is like when a Mr. Obama is riding on the dick of doom, he's right behind everybody in America, getting ready to perpetrate the American people with the dick of doom. And right to now, you kind of see my beautiful non boat in the background because they did not have given me the, the proper recognition that I deserve for my book of Angels on the Ark. And I'm going to keep making these videos every day. I'm going to make one or two or three videos about the, my book until they're making me a world renowned or until they're killing me. And you know, I don't care one way or the other. They're going to recognize my work because I have made the greatest discovery in the history of this world because I have proven that the Bible was written by an alien race of beings. I have proven this. And I have proven this beyond any doubt, and I'm going to show you right now, next to my spare tires, I'll put this down, and I'll open, hold this about like this for one second, and I'm going to show you what I have proven on a one dollar bill, that to this, this picture that you see right to here, this picture that you see right to here, this is a picture of the skull and the bones on the one dollar bill. When you fold the bill in this exact configuration, when I back this off, you're going to see the head of the hog-nosed bat and the skull and bones with teeth, which is a representation of the logos of the Skull and Bone Society created by Yale University prior to the year 1832. Now, when you move over to the other side of the $1 bill, we're going to roll this around like this. When you move over to the other side, you kind of see the owl on the one dollar bill. And that's the owl on the one dollar bill. And that's the owl from the Bohemian Grove Society. That's right. And this is Michael Fazio telling you that the nobody in this world can prove me wrong because I am the world's leading expert